I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Jello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. We're still dealing with some repercussions uh, from uh, when we were gone at Dice Tower Con, our server burned up or something yeah. for our internet. So that's why we're a couple minutes late. But we're we're here. We're ready to talk about Kickstarter. Let's do it. And we haven't talked about Kickstarter for like three weeks. So there's some several big projects. This is the time of year where I should say there's always big projects going yeah. on. But this is where the projects that people are deliberately timing to go during con season mm. happen. Mm. You know, because some of these are going to end. Well, these are ending before Gen Con. Mm -hmm. But the, some of these started when Origins went off. So they were able to go to Origins, have a booth. Yeah. Um, the, these games are probably going to be delivered next Gen Con. That's usually, it's usually a year yeah. for Kickstarters. So with that in mind, we got several Kickstarters to go through. Some really awesome ones. And others. Are we ready? <laughs> Still stupid. All right. Well, <laughs> look here. Right? Uh, first, we have the Argent Saga trading card game. Now, just on a personal level, as soon as I saw that it was a trading card game, I was out. Yep, me too. Um, because I'm not kickstarting a a drug. This is this is not a drug. This ain't <laughs> this ain't this ain't gonna get you hooked. No, you know I know what I mean. No, this but it's kind of like saying, oh, I don't drink soda because it's a drug. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stop I'm just drinking uh, diet. But what I'm saying is, I don't wanna I don't wanna kickstart something that is just the beginning. It's Trading card games. Sink. Trading card games have like the lowest percentage of successful games. Yeah. In all of gaming, dumb. blew my mind that this did as well as it has so far. It's got like ninety six thousand dollars or something. Ninety three thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a collectible card game that actually looks like it's from the collectible card game heyday. Look at the card frame. Well, sure. The, so the art's neat, but when I went down here and looked at where's the cards, I thought that was a magic card almost. The frame and everything, it looks very magic cardy. It looks like a a CC. Like if if you you brought these cards to me. This was published, and you gave it to me without having any knowledge minute. of this Kickstarter. Wait a minute. I played this. <laughs> when? Ow. 1996. I'll just break the awkward <laughs> silence here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I, I was trying to remember. I played this at Gamma. This some year. guy grabbed me this year. and said, yes. I was at the Gamma trade show, and some guy grabbed me and was like, hey, I got this. At gunpoint? This, this. Training card game, and I was like, "Well, you know what? I got some free time. You happen to catch me at the right moment." That's what I always tell people, because I say no to prototypes like 99.9% .9 of the time. And he caught me at the right moment. I had nothing to do for like 40 minutes. I was like, "Why not?" And it, wow, did I did not like this game. I remember it distinctly. I thought it was very generic. Uh, you are trying to blow up these towers. It does that thing I hate, where there's they add two extra zeros to all numbers. Like I do 500 damage. You know, and okay, so my thousand damage thing. And also, the guy who taught me massacred me. I was like, hmm, I don't know. What to do. He's like, bum, 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 bum. it's like, oh, okay, cool. That was fun. So, um, sure, Sports this was my pick of the week. No, it's not. <laughs> this, I, I tell you what, man, I mean, I, I was scrolling through, and about half of this uh, campaign. Is artwork. Yeah, sure. You scroll about halfway through, the rest of it is just artwork. Pictures, 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 pictures. It's and not it's bad. not about, I mean, I like it's it. not about the mechanism. No, it's it's good artwork, but I feel like this is another game that like is that. just trying to be uh, trying to be published on artwork alone. It's a collectible card game, dude. In I know. in the year twenty nineteen. I mean yeah. to be published in twenty twenty. No. It looks beautiful. Well, it's going to be published, frames. obviously. They've if, succeeded. Again, if you showed me this game now without me knowing the background, I'd be like, oh, I never heard of this CCG from back in the day. This one passed me by. <laughs> that's what the cards look like. Yeah. This is coming out March. No, January. Oh, no, that's when the T-shirt comes out. Where's the game? What game? Well, March 2020 was. 
There it is, January 2020. Oh, January. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. when it comes out, we'll review. Let's move on. Moniker, serious nonsense was shut up and sent out. Now, I've never actually played Monikers, have you? No, I never have, but it's like, uh, it's the same game as... Um Time's up, I thought. Yeah, time's up. Man. It's like time's up, but instead of being actual people, it's stuff like this. An unprofessional so. mermaid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one is shut up and sit down. They're the ones who wrote the cards. So they do. They, I mean, they have pretty funny. I like that lying about karate thing that was in there. It's like, yeah, I got a black belt. <laughs> I'm not saying it came from a karate place. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I, I've never played with these. Do you think it's like more difficult to play with this, though? Because you don't know what you're guessing, per se. I assume it has to be. It's a, it could be literally anything. What's the difference between an unprofessional mermaid and a lazy mermaid and a, you know, a lost mermaid? I mean, like, what? how do you get those across? I think you have to know what's in the game. Like, they have a centaur at a convention would never come out of my mouth. How do you? As a yeah, guess. I don't know. Right. Well, I don't. Well, but I guess maybe the first time it would be like half horse, half man is attending. These Gen cards con. are all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. I guess so. And then once you go through the second time, you can only say one word. Yes. Sure. I've heard good thing. things about monikers. Maybe I would Me try too. it sometime just because of this. I, I like Time's Up a lot. Yeah, yeah. All right. Principal Dilemma. So this one here just barely funded. Um, wait. Okay. <laughs> the numbers changed. I thought it was going down. <laughs> oh, my. The Righteous Pursuit Through Moral Combat. So I was like, oh, okay, what is this? Like a, mm -hmm. a Christian game? But nope. no, it's kind of like... It's, it's a nice breaking game. It's Philosophers. Oh, what's that game? Scruples. But it's like a Scruples where they're trying to make it look classy. It's like, an, it's like an activity to break the ice between people talking, right? I think is what it is. Yeah, but could they make it look more boring? You and draw oh, look, a card. They're you're... using the trolley problem. There's two other Kickstarters about that right now. Really? Yeah. Huh. So you have a dilemma, you read a card, you pick one of two options, and then the other players on their turn play something to switch up that and see if you would change your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a talking activity, I guess, is the idea. I don't like the look of it, but... I don't like the look of it at all. I guess if it's supposed to be some sort of ice-breaking, gimmicky conversation piece, maybe? All right. No pick of the weeks? All no, right. no, come on. On the underground, this London, Berlin. You don't know that. Yeah. yeah Actually, is. there was a close second, very close second, which I'll talk about when I get to it. But yes, this is my pick of the week. I love On the Underground, and this version I've seen in person looks fantastic. It really does. Okay. That is one of the best looking boxes I think I've ever seen. I really like that. One of my favorite box covers. The boards look great. They got screened, uh, silk screen meeples of like different buildings. I, I like this game anyway. Yeah. One of my favorite games, and then it added a new map, a Berlin map, which I looked at and has some different feels to it. In this game, you have a subway. There's one really lazy person in this game, and you are trying to get that person, when they travel around London, or now Berlin, to use your subway lines. Mm -hmm. And they will pick the most convenient one to them. So you're trying to make it as convenient as you can. Mm -hmm. And you actually control more than one subway line. But yeah, this high quality. Game I never expected we'd get a reprint like this, a lavish reprint like this. No, it's but it looks a, great. Kind of a Things forgotten little Euro game, you know. I like how they used your your, your review back in 2006 as the example of how the game used to look. Oh, is that? I, I didn't get down that far. I guess where is it? <laughs> Try the game videos. Right there. The 2006. <laughs> <laughs> so they said this video also illustrates the effort of care that went in updating the art. Also, in other words, it used to look terrible. <laughs> am I the only like am I the only reviewer of the original version? Maybe. Well, I guess they don't necessarily need to put a bunch of the old ones there. Yeah, I guess. Okay. But no, it looks nice. It's um I'm sure they're doing a good job updating it. I haven't I haven't played in ages, and I don't know if they are actually changing anything rule rules wise. Minor. It was very minor. He showed yeah. me this stuff, and the the bigger rule changes that happen in the Berlin map. Right. It just has a different feel to it. That's but cool. yeah, it's a very minor change. It's a good way to do it. That's how you that's how you bring a game back. All right. Darwinots, a game of interdimensional exploration. Mm -hmm. This is a now. See, you told me, or some one of you two told me, this was not a small game. I thought it was. Yeah. I looked at it, and I was like, oh, it's yet another one of these green couch games, which some of them I really like, but they're yes. always small box games. And I was like, oh, it's a waste of Vincent Dutre's artwork. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as far I saw a an early copy of it at Origins, I think it was, and it's about the size of Pandemic. I will say those tiles look a little mundane. They look generic a little bit, yeah. But maybe it's just because we're looking at them from a, a distance. The artwork looks spectacular, of course, but that's that's easy. I mean, in these days, you can get good artwork in so many games. I, do I like know. I like the dinosaurs. I, li I really <laughs> like how those look. I don't know mm -hmm. what the game's like. It looks neat. I'm excited to play it myself, and this is something that... Oh, I see. This I'll, is next to those. It's a Carcassonne-style box. There you thing. go. Yeah, kind of. If I was, uh, if I backed more games, this would be super tempting. I would probably back this. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Huh. All right. Pangea. Now this one made a lot of money. Yeah. So this this looks really interesting to me. But this one scares me for one reason. What's that? It's Red Imp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their games have a bad track record. Let's show what they are. Okay. They tend to do games, so they did Atlantis, Isle of the Gods. I think you like that one, right? Yeah, I like that game. Okay, but they did Martians, the Story of Civilization, which is one of the few games where I threw the rule book because it was that bad. That rule book was awful. Mm -hmm. It was the one where they mixed co-op, competitive, semi-co-op, and solo. The rules were all mixed together. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, I haven't played that one. The Lords of the Ice Garden was a really interesting idea, but didn't really come together as a solid game. Yeah, I didn't dislike that one either, but it was... It looked yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that Martians one really scared me off. So, I guess the Atlantis I haven't played. You said you liked that one? Yeah. No, you've played it. No, wait, maybe you didn't. No, I don't think so. It was, uh, we did it on a testing Tuesday. I remember that. I haven't played it, so... Yeah, I know you have. Really? Just keep saying no. Yes, I did. Yeah, we all four played it, yeah. I played it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. Was it just the three of us? Yeah, okay. That's, I remember. Well, anyway, Pangea here. <laughs> I really don't recall that at all. <laughs> the board looks great. The components look great. Yeah. I just worry. Is that supposed That's to be all. the Earth? That's not what the Earth continents look like. Do you want to be a synapsid? Have you never... Or trolling. would you like to be a... You're trolling. Shut Sarupsida. up. <laughs> Am I saying these right? That, I like these Sorpsita, guys. Sorpsida, yeah, I guess. Amphibians, <sighs> I know that one. Woohoo! Good job. Man. Good one. Invertebrates. Ooh, you, that's two in a row. I don't want to be a snail. What else they that's, got? That's say, it. Say other words. Say other words. <laughs> all right. No, I mean, it looks interesting and all. I just have to wait and see what comes out. This is one that I'm just, again, I'm nervous about. I guess we can, it look, it looks you can download really the rules. It looks interesting to me. I, is I, this your pick of the week? No. Ah, okay. No, but it's it, it was definitely a close second, yeah. All right. I had a couple close seconds. Nice. Now, this one, however... <laughs> Is definitely not my pick of the Millennial week. Millennial Manatee? The only reason I put this on here is because it's doing decently well for... It's 18,000 with 489 backers. I, I can't tell. Is this making fun of Millennials or is it, like, not making fun of Millennials? I don't know. Um, I think I'm it's thinking that it's, it's supposed to be making fun of Millennials. But it looks like it's marketing to Millennials also. Uh, yes, because they're selling you like uh, the little uh, pack where the game comes in. And yeah. Does this game appeal to you? I mean, forget the millennial part. No. Like just the how it looks. No. Right. How it doesn't appeal to me either. No. Um, it's a race to pay off your student debt. What fun! Because <laughs> <laughs> in real life, that's also fun. Yes. These kinds of games do tend to do well. A lot of people like them. It has. It, it clearly has shades of. Uh, exploding kittens and all of that. That's what they're going for. It's not doing nearly as well as those because it's not based on an IP, people know. But, yeah, you know, I get See, it. I mean, all the manatees are wearing, I guess, millennialist shirts? Yeah, I don't know. We're not trying to make any statement by even looking at this. I don't, it's just kind of a, eh, whatever. Anyway, yeah, it's some silly card game that yeah. I'm sure people out there really like this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, it funded anyway. The price is not doing better, to be honest. Role player, Fiends and Familiars expansion, mm. making almost $400,000. Now, you've played the first expansion <sighs> to this. First expansion is one of my favorite expansions, period. I've never played the first expansion. I really um, like the first so this expansion. This is more you. But look at all those dice towers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, expansion actually, did it win? No, did, did it win the best game expansion? No, it's a nominee. Well, I don't know if it won or not. I don't remember. But. Rise of Phoenix. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, this came out last year. You're right. 
it was nominated, it hasn't, it hadn't won. Although it, it was a close second. The only reason it lost was because Rise of Fenris existed. Right. Right. But yeah, last year was a great year for expansions. So this looks like it adds a familiar. You get a unique power. You want the Jackalope or the Cursed Raven? Jackalope. I for agree. Sure. Ooh, there's a mimic. I love mimics. Yeah, and lots of unlocked stretch goals. So it adds familiar boards, more monsters and minions from the new ones. Plus, ha, ha, new dice. Those are cool. <laughs> no, I love new dice. Those are neat looking. Are there so dice like dice. that in What's the first wrong? expansion? Well, what's the difference? Okay, so in the original game, dice go from one to six, right? They do. With one color. Normal dice. And then in the first expansion, they added clear dice that went from like three to eight or whatever. No. <laughs> okay, and now But what? you could put those in a slot and you can make your stats really good. The problem is they had no color. Got it. These look like they're two colors, but then don't go the over numbers four. Numbers are awful. Right. So <laughs> that's kind of an interesting... They're average. Average to low. It requires role play. The Monsters and Minion expansion is recommended, but not required. Also, you can back it in this expansion. Yeah. Okay, cool. I wonder, on those split dice, I wonder if you can... Combine the two numbers. Like, can no, you no, I think you can. I think that's a two, and it's red and blue. But they don't go above uh, four. Okay. Well, I was looking at it. It's either a red one or a red. Well, oh, that'd be even worse then. Oh. So it includes the combat dice. Those were included in the last expansion. So okay. it looks like the monsters and minions. It's doing that again with a few other things. And it also has a big box that holds all of the expansions and the base game. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yes. I like it. That's the way. All right. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Just just for in Manatee's defense, Robert Geislinger says, oddly enough, Millennial Manatees is fun. Same people that brought you pretending to grown up. That one I don't know. I said it looks, it looks cute. I think there's a lot of people who will like that game. Yeah. There's an audience, but um, I don't think I'm in it. But I don't like jokey games. That's all. You know, I don't necessarily, I don't get my uh, humor from card games. Wears thin too quickly for me. That's all. Crypt X, a narrative puzzle game, has 1,001 backers. It feels like that's a clue right there. So this is yet another one of these puzzle games that se that wants to go beyond, you know, the Steps. hour box. Because this one says seven to ten hours, cool. 51 puzzles, and medium difficulty, which probably means impossible. Say well, what? this is my pick of the week. Is it? Yeah, Crypt X. Uh, seven. To ten hours. Well, well you, you play, play that it up. once. Mm. That's the whole campaign or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, there's a few reasons for that. First of all, it's from the company uh, inside, inside the, the box. box. They're the same people who did Subterra. Oh, okay. I like their stuff. Got okay. It. And let's see what else they've done. We'll take a look. A look, quick look. Newspeak. That was. Can you escape Subterra? Quick draw. Oh, the statecraft is awful. <coughs> you just like Subterra. Yeah, you just I like don't know. Right. What, is, else what is Mole Euler? What is that? I don't know. Is that one I, is that I don't know. Mole? I only know. No, molecular. Mole C. Euler? What is that? Molecular. I know. He's got the troll hat on. You've been doing this all day. Well placed. Anyway, it looks neat. I like the look of the whole thing. It looks like a notebook is part of it or like a puzzle I do like book. this as a power to narrative, right? I yeah. hope so. Because the, the problem is I've already backed one of these, right? I told you I got that whole box full of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there like... I don't know where to I start. Crack into this thing. Is that yeah. a device? So is it? It's also app driven then. Oh. Uh -huh. It looks neat. It looks like a, a fun, again just puzzles. I, I like puzzles. I like the escape room thing. This looks like a side step from that kind of uh, box. Yeah, it really looks cool though. It looks for neat, sure. man. I'm 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 all over this. Thing, I do also so. like this. Open it up. Choose a puzzle. And then so try you to can. Crack it. You yeah. don't have to do them in order either. Yeah. We could say, "I'll do this," and we're like, "Ah, oh, we're having a hard time." Okay, let's switch to this puzzle for a while. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my huh. pick of the week. It looks neat. Man. Oh, now, is this a one? Submit your answer on the device. Okay. Is this a one-time thing, or can you do it multiple times? Even if it's a one-time thing, seven to ten hours—that's good return. How much is the price? Eighty-two dollars. Did you make that up? Yes, I made that up. I made that up. I don't know. Looks like it's twenty. No, it's twenty-one pounds. Yeah, man, it's a really heavy book. But how much does it cost? <laughs> Stop. 21 pounds is 26 hey, Sam, bucks. don't shake your head at me with your bad jokes. Mo C. Uller. Mo C. Uller. What is Molecular, it? man. I know, dude. Builders of Blankenberg, Fields and Flocks. This is, I think, the only game on this that we're looking at today that has not funded yet. Or I have a yet. question. Does the name Blankenberg, are they, is that like supposed to be punny? 
Like Blankenberg sounds like here's a blank board. Fill in your Fill word. It. Is that is that supposed to be a joke or did they just not realize it sounds kind of funny? I'm sh- I'm thinking. I'm it's assuming it's not a joke and it just is an unfortunate How did side that effect. How not get caught? No, it's no, not no, a big no, no. deal. I, don't think I mean, there big... could be a place called Blankenberg, but it just sounds kind of silly. It's like, haha, <laughs> Blankenberg, get it? <laughs> yeah. It looks dry and like a it really, really dry does, Euro right? game, so I figured it's not a pun. Well, this is an expansion for Builders of Blankenberg. Blankenberg was the. Blankenberg Jr. No, I mean, this is like the second expansion for this game. Yes, well. this game, again. Um, Let's take a look here real quick. What else this Cobblestone Games has done? They've done Builders of Blankenford, Fields and Flocks. I think the last time was unsuccessful, so they redid it. And they, they did the Axe, and something Cutthroat. Or There's a lot of Builders of Blankenford. I really don't like their graphic design. Unfortunately, they don't. I don't. I don't think it's very strong. All right, so that's not your pick of the week. All right, Kodama 3D. I already have my pick of the week. I know. Kodama 3D. I two, though. Is this that one okay? surprisingly is not. Doing as well as I thought. Now, this one, if you remember, was one of the ones kicks that are canceled. Okay. From uh, Indie Boards oh, and Cards. Oh, it is. Okay. It got, I forget what the reason was. It was just kicks are canceled that they restarted. It's hard to get that legging back underneath you. Yeah. But Kodama, I thought, was fairly popular. I think so. They've got, they've got quite the little family of games with Kodama. They have Kodama, which is this card laying sort of free-form tree-building thing, then mm-hmm. Kodama Duo, it's the same thing for two people, and then Kokoro, Avenue of the Kodama, is a game that has nothing to do with that. They just bought it and rethemed it. Huh. Okay, that was a and different it, game. They came up from a different company. I think, that universe. I think this was the that one that... That one's great, and then this is just the same thing, but in three dimensions... I think this was the game, the Kodama and all that was action phase games, and when they got bought by Indie Boards and Cards, this came in with them. I think that's what happened, if I remember correctly. Um, this looks okay, though. I like the way that that tree looks. Also, it's spinning, so that kind of attracts yeah, me. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I never liked the card game that much myself, and this looks like it's just even more fiddly. I like, the, I like Kokoro. That's a great game. But again, they're not really related. All right. Board game bag and board game calendar. That is really generically named, but it made 180,000. Yeah, well, but the really, bags are awesome. Well, looking. It's very descriptive as well. <laughs> you know what you're getting. Exactly. It is a bag and a calendar. <laughs> bag and a calendar. Chicken and biscuits. And it's a 50. 15- it's basically the board gaming equivalent of chicken and biscuits. Do you like weekly desk calendars? <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. Uh, I like monthly large ones. Yeah, I agree. I like monthly. Weekly, I have to keep flipping to get to the next week. Mm-hmm. Daily yeah. gives you that thought of the day. You really want to go full out. You get the yearly one. You never flip it once <laughs> a year. That's it. You just have to get we, up the we wall. We have one. Part of the room. On our wall here. No, you have to erase things and add new things. No, no, no. I put up the year one, too. We still erase it because we're moving a month each time. No, it's like yeah, it's multi-layer fake. wallpaper. You just, whenever you're All done right. with one year, you... Look at these bags. They are... Oh, it's got the next year on. oh, this is from the Board Game Tables people, who also named their game, the company Board Game Tables. Yes. Their naming isn't necessarily uh, very creative, but <laughs> no. they but they make sure you know what you exactly. are getting. Exactly, those getting bags do look good. Table. They're cool. They're cool, and they're, they're not a board game bag. They're not dreadfully expensive. Those were selling really well at Origins, like really well. Really, wow. Water resistant zippers. You can make them. Back. I I have to say, as a side note, do not like when people carry these around as backpacks. Well, especially at a convention. At a convention, because you're walking through and you're like, oh my, get out of this person's way. Because <laughs> yeah. if they swing around, you're dead. <laughs> depends, depends what game is in there. No, that guy, if he turns, that hurts. You've been gloomhavened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's so cool. Did they say who the, like, gloomhaven. who took the, who took, who took the pictures of the calendar? Who took the pictures, <laughs> precious? <laughs> no, I don't know. This, I don't care about. They, this week, play a game without talking. Yeah. Why? Yeah, true. This game play game has no luck. Thing, I don't know if you Thanks, were... Thanks, Dad. That's kind of neat. I want that without the calendar. I don't know really? if you were... I want to have an app that just generates a topic like that. Just to, Sometimes you have so many games that it's hard to pick what to play. No, I don't, I, like this, like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I wanted to have like 100 entry, entries, but I want like 82 of them to be like, play a game by yourself. <laughs> 
if yeah. you scroll further down, he does say that the artists are going to be paid, and he does actually. Again, I'm not. I'm, right I wasn't even insinuating that. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. curious who the artists. I mean, who the photographers were. He tells you right there. It gives you their name right there. <clears throat> oh, he's using their. Uh, their online handles or something, whatever. Yeah, I can never tell what that means. Maybe they're from Board Game Geek. Yeah, yeah maybe. Those are Board Game Geek usernames. All right, that's cool. Now, again, yeah, I wasn't, no, I wasn't insinuating nice that he wasn't paying. I was just curious who the artists were. That's right. a good right, looking. Right. That's a good looking uh, project. I wonder what game that is with eggs. All right. Preda Porter. I saw this being played a couple times. By Preda Porter. So. Okay, by Mandy. I this you played this game. I have, which is weird because it's a this fairly heavy new Euro version. Game. No, I played the original version a couple years ago. Uh, Amby and Toby taught me Toby. how to play, and we played with. No, we didn't play with uh, one of the brothers, Murph. We we played. Um, Definitely not. Those guys can't, couldn't keep up with this game. No, we played Dungeon Beds, which is another. Euro, All right. Euro well, anywho, I disagree. This and, looks. This looks really good. The first one's fine, but the components were definitely lower quality. Right. The this theme is definitely really unique and interesting. That This has been like in state of flux for a while. It came out in 2011. It didn't sell very well at all. Ignacy was disappointed by it. He made a big, heavy game. Didn't do very well. Then he said he was going to re-release it as a video game design theme. theme, which I thought was cool. Then they decided to go back to this theme, which I'm also cool with. doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it looks certainly better than the original. Um, I never have played it, so. I wonder if it might be too heavy for you. It's a, it's definitely probably. Ooh, there's I didn't see this. Yeah, ten there's they're going to cards with art from Ryan Lockett. Uh, Piero's going to have an additional ten cards oh, as well. The guy in. that does uh, Architects of West Kingdom. Um, wow, that's and it it actually is a Viking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I that's what I thought was cool about it. Melissant is styling from the 14th century. <laughs> yes. I, uh, yeah, I don't know, Tom. It's probably too heavy for me. You're right. Oh, I do like Pierre. Man, uh, he's such a good artist. Again, I don't, I don't know if it is too heavy. This is about, I think, it's about on the same weight as um, uh, Paladins of the, of the uh, West Kingdom. I think it's about the same. There's maybe a little bit more going on overall, and there's a little bit more jockeying for position and stuff like that on the different tracks, if I remember correctly. But... I don't think this would be too heavy for They drew hats and everybody. Some of us wear our own hats. All right. And they shave Rotto for some reason. Game Topper 2.0, the ultimate gaming accessory. This one's doing extremely well. We were just talking about how Berkey has managed to get Game Toppers. He was talking about like a Gen Con. Mm -hmm. He said he doesn't have a booth, but he's at like 40 booths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Game Toppers, if you haven't seen them, you put the game table on top of something else like here it's on an ottoman it looks like yeah and it works yeah. also and they're all as a side note his mats are like the best mats in the business i yeah, think they're good they're, they're very really good, good and mats. these new art artsy ones look really good well he's and working with a bunch of different artists to produce these yes and they're also partnering with i think dogmite for these rails mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. these dragon shields that go up that's right and they're banging who's that loser <laughs> the Moriarty? That guy's evil. That's not Berkey himself. Who is that? I don't know who it's that guy Mycroft. is. That's Mycroft. It says it right there. Well, that's not Watson. That's, that's Eric Stummerer. So come on now. Why are you look breaking immersion <laughs> right now, man? <laughs> don't break Wait, More Vikings. Are Vikings in every Kickstarter now? Of course. Why not? Yeah, I really like these mats are cool. You know, I I don't know that I want to use them all the time, but that Viking one I like a lot. I don't care about the Viking part. I just like that it's I like that there's stuff around the edges and the middle is kind of yeah. clear. The Ryan Lockett one also looks yes. really good. I saw one of them. I forget which one. At Origins also, and they looks they look excellent in person. I imagine and so, they're covered in the little details. As a side note, Berkey's a good friend of ours, so keep that in mind. But yeah. we think his stuff is great. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Dwellings of Eldervale. This one we played live on our channel. And I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed that playing. All right, who's picking? Pick of the week, we baby. On. Yeah, I figured. I had so much fun playing this. I really did. This I mean, was good. it's a good, solid game. The game is there, but the outside stuff yep. was just fun. Yeah. And I gotta say, when I first saw this, when it was announced a while ago, I was kind of like, oh yeah, it looks like another one of these games where they threw everything in the kitchen sink in. But I really did enjoy the fighting the monsters and the worker placement 
Oh yeah, there's my quote. <laughs> they actually put your quote on like a really cool graphic too. Did you notice that? No, not that one. Uh, it's further down. further down. I was like, okay. And the artwork on this one looks good. We we saw a prototype form. It looked pretty good, but yeah. I'm pretty happy without this one. Yeah, I'm, and game, game trays. trays. <laughs> I'm very finicky when it comes to big monster games. I'm very picky. You know, kind of just, I don't know. They, there's something intangible about them that sometimes I'll go for and sometimes not. And I enjoyed my time with this. It is kind of a hybrid game. There's a lot of Euro-y stuff in it, right. but then monsters. Where is his quote? I'm looking for it. And they showed oh. you how to use the and game. Again, it. if you want to see how this is played, we do have a playthrough of it uh, that's in here where they, we were actually taught the game and played it. Oh, the Dread Crack. I whooped that thing, I think. Ooh, Did you? Minotaur. I don't know. I think I bought it. I don't remember. You bought it? Oh, man. Does that ghost have hands? Yes. Its dress is made of hands or feet? That's, that's just creepy. Ew. I don't want to hear the sound bass for that one. The Oracle. <laughs> Stupid good, said James Hudson. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back, wait, 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 wait. I'm not, mine's not on here. Are you looking for yours? No, no, I was looking. Mine, they didn't put my quote on a cool graphic. They only put well, Maybe yours. you should give them a better quote. There's your quote. I gave them a good quote. It's a lot better than yours. Dwellings of Aldebaran is an interesting and engaging collision of. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, okay. Right. Yours used like 82 I, exclamation marks. I actually so. put thought into mine. Yeah, see, there it is. There it I is. got the control giant monster. Yeah, your quote included the words blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. <laughs> that right. is really cool animation. No respect. No respect. What I tell you. Shut that up is. and take my two gems and a scroll. All right, anyway, this really is a lot of fun. It looks overwhelming, too, I think. You might go in and look at this and be like, ah. Oh. But the game itself did not feel that overwhelming. It's a no. smaller yeah. game than it looks, if that makes sense. The monsters are there. They're it's big. A tight, it's tight. It's a tightly made game. Again, if you're tempted and, and not sure, go check out our video. You can get a really good idea of how the I game works. I think this works. is a coming. The unfortunate thing is I'm looking forward to seeing this, and I don't think it's coming out until next year. The only thing I don't like about this game, I'll tell you, the title. I don't think it's a very memorable title. Yeah, especially with... Well, it's a game I always, I always mix it up without. Uh, they have to keep correcting me. I want to say Dwellings of Everdell. No, it's Elder Vale. Yeah, that's my only issue with it, You'd which be is quiet, pointless. Robert. But what did Robert say? Giving Tom the point for the better quote this round. I'm just gonna start making up random words. What do you think of my game? Ah, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> blah blah blah. It's great. <laughs> exactly. That's my new quote. I'll just use it for all the games. Yeah. All right. Isle of Cats. This one almost was another. Uh, the Dwellings of Elder Vale was my second for, okay, the, right. for the game of the, the month or week, whatever. This one looks really cool, and I don't like cats. I rolled my eyes when I saw the Isle of Cats thing. I was like, okay, here we go. Another. But the game looks good. Yes, and then I scrolled down and looked what you were actually doing in the game, and that looks fun. And I have to say that this one coming. <laughs> I don't no, know, guys. It looks fun trying to piece all of these different uh, families of cats onto your boat to rescue them from the island. Yeah. It looks interesting to me. You are like the only person I know who has this reaction. Everyone else, when they came back from Origins, it was just like rave, 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 rave. It's rave, amazing. Rave. It just looks like more Tetris to me. Sure, but it looks like it's fun Tetris. Cat Meeples! I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of these Tetris games are kind of. 85 unique cat. I don't know, a lot of people oh, give you. garbage to roll and write games, and that's true. There's way too many of them. But do it enough with the Tetris, man. I get Even that. Rosenberg has made like six of them. But this looks better than his stuff. It, uh, I'm not saying it looks like it plays better, but it definitely looks better yeah, than yeah, his yeah. stuff. Sure, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I really like how these tiles but again, are. Again, I'm like wrong, right? I mean, who, why do I know? People like this stuff, so. And most folks are saying that it's that it's a good game. Oh, I like those fish meeples, that too. That looks like it says... BS unique tiles. Giant bag. Yeah, this is not actually that expensive of a game either, too, with all the stuff that's been unlocked. So, cool. What is that? What is what? That one. Bizarro looking cat. No. New Oshax tile will be added to every Kickstarter pack. All right, Dice Hospital Community Care. Expansions for Dice Hospital. They, I remember, I forget where it was. They were like, hey, you thought those ambulances were big? There's a helicopter in this one. It's not a small one either. I forget what you thought of this game. Did you like it? I did like it. It's 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 actually a lot lighter than you might think, mm -hmm. because it's essentially you are you have these dice that are patients and they're dying, so you are placing workers to keep. 
I forget now. For some reason, it will slow mind if you're making the dice higher or lower. But you are trying sure. to. I think they. I think you're making them higher. When they get the six, they're healed. But each turn, they also all click down one. Okay. So you're trying to get them in the hospital, find the right people. You have workers that are different colors. So any of these spots, so if you put the color worker in the color spot, it does the job better okay. than someone else. And you just get different things. Take all your yellow dice and make them go down one or make them go up one or whatever. Okay. Got I it. like it. So it's just more the same with a helicopter mini. There's new con. Oh. There it is. The helicopter Ooh. mini next to the ambulance. This probably doesn't come painted. I don't know. Vernon probably sits at the end of the factory. He comes up the same way and he's like... <laughs> It's like the I Love Lucy scene, and he's trying to paint stuff as fast as he can. He's sticking them in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man, what a, fly, what a throwback. Wow, I haven't seen that in ages. All right. Most people are, uh, there's got to be a few people who are like, how white? I know, right? Yeah. They're gonna, they're That's a classic that. scene. you got to watch it. All right. got to Google that. All righty. Um, D-Mocker, limited edition from Spielworks. And it says from Spielworks, but it's being run by Indie Game Studios. Which is mm -hmm. also with any boards and cards. I'm really not sure. Right. Whatever. Strong Old Games is reprinting the mocker. <laughs> Essentially, what's going on here? Uh, but Spielworks is doing it. This looks classy. The last one looked. The last one, if I remember correctly, was Valley Games, and looked a little funky. Um, this That's is neat. I mean, I'm glad it's back in print. I don't know how hard it was to get necessarily right before this Kickstarter. Um, I wonder how many of the people who are backing this game are bait, have never played it, and they're just going off of the hype that it's had for all of these years. Or, as know. opposed to how many people are like replacing their... I've version. played it, I and I like the game. I my money on, there's got to be a lot of people who already know this game, have played it, maybe never did get a copy, but they, they know it. Here's yeah. one thing this I'm surprised about. This does not about. seem like an impulse buy, necessarily, as much as it seems like a, ooh, it's back. I'm jumping on this. I'm kind of surprised that they put a preview here, right, from Man vs. Me, but whatever, but mm -hmm. they didn't put any of the reviews. There's tons of reviews for Demacher. Like, people gushing they about want, it. They want to show maybe they didn't want to show the like. other, the old versions of mm -hmm. the game. That could be. That could very much be. But yeah, this is, they said here at the top, it's the first game in the database. That's not anything that, <laughs> that doesn't make the game better. <laughs> but it is the first one, I guess, that Aldi entered in when he started the Board Game Geek database. Mm -hmm. But the mocker is about German elections. After playing it, I now understand still nothing about German elections, except that they're confusing, as if this game is any indication. But mm -hmm. this game is a very, even though it's four hours, or three, I guess, if you play quickly, it is a finely oiled machine. Everything affects everything else. It's pretty neat how it works. It's just long. I like it. It's just that if you said you want to play it, I'd be like, do I have the time? Maybe. So. It's heavy. It's a long, involved, interesting, heavy game. All righty. Well, that's what we found at Kickstarter this week. Let's go to our contributors. Hey, folks. Welcome back to another Dice Tower preview recap. I'm Mark. Ah, very dangerous. You go first. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a few Kickstarter games, and we're gonna be kicking it off with Faza. It's been two years since we discovered we're not alone. The Faza arrived in force, bringing their motherships, the Carrier, which is releasing drones to populate our planet, the Destroyer, which has decimated our military, and the former that is literally changing the landscape of our world, terraforming it to fit their needs. Our guerrilla band of survivors have been using tactics trying to defeat this formidable foe. However, the battle does not go well, but the winds of change are at hand. A rebel faction within the Faza have decided they are unhappy with the direction this mission has taken and are willing to help us out by leveraging their knowledge of the technology and these motherships, we still might win the day. Will you join the fight? Will you help us save the world? So it is a cooperative game, and you are desperately trying to stop the invading motherships from destroying the Earth and having their way with our planet. So along the way, though, you have to use that faction of the Faza to help you out because they can infiltrate all those giant motherships. They know the technology, and they can really help you out. Next up, we have Legends of Novus. Legends of Novus is a fantasy adventure game where you take on the role of a hero adventuring across a mythical landscape in order to rid the lands of terrorizing creatures that have been summoned 
based on a horrible magical maelstrom that happened over a century ago. Now it's up to you to be the hero of the land and become the next legend of Novus. Legends of Novus has that video game Diablo feel to it where you are scouring the landscape looking for that next best piece of gear, leveling up, getting more experience and better skills, totally pulling that into a board game version that really has the same feel to it. And that game has always been one of my favorites. And so to have it in a board game just feels and works really well. Next up, we have Game Toppers. Yep, like it sounds, Game Toppers adds a gaming table to your existing table. Amazing quality, fantastic components, all kinds of accessories, and phenomenal gaming mats. I got to go out to Game Toppers headquarters and check it out. Go watch this preview because there's a lot of neat things coming. No, I keep teasing it, but again, we have Dwellings of Eldervale. Eldervale, you know, the thing about this preview, we're doing something a little different. We're going to be taking a look at all the monsters in the game. There's a lot of videos out there showing how this game plays and works. There's even a live play from Tom and the guys. You got to check it out. But we want to focus on something a little different. So give this one a closer look and check out some of these amazing creatures and the miniatures that go along with them. So the preview I'm most recently working on is Emperor's Choice. So this is coming from Tasty Minstrel Games. This is a, a rehash or a redo of an existing game and they're making it all deluxified. So I'm excited to see what they do with this. My preview will be showing the previous version. So keep an eye on their campaign for what all the new components and new artwork is going to look like. So check out our preview which is coming soon if you want more information. All right, so for my pick of the week, oh my gosh, this one is really difficult because I like all these games. Man, it's definitely tough. Uh, you know, Legends of Novus has that Diablo feel. Definitely has got my eye. Dwellings of Eldervale, oh my gosh, this game is beautiful and it's got so many neat work replacement aspects to it. And Faza, again, that War of the Worlds feel. I love cooperative games. And it has a really neat art style with characters that are very unique and with unique powers. So, and of course Game Toppers, which Game Toppers is phenomenal and enhances all of these games. But I think I'm leaning towards Legend of Novus. It definitely has that RPG fantasy feel and I really like that. Building up your character, making him better, and really taking it to the next level. So those are the games we most recently took a look at. Now, there's a ton more coming, so keep an eye open for that. And if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you at the table. Sister Meeple here, bringing you my five most anticipated games launching on Kickstarter in mid-July. July 11th. Based on the recent Copenhagen game by Queen Games, Copenhagen Roll and Write is a family weight polyomino placement game. Players draw in polyominoes based on the colors of dice they roll to construct the facade of a building front. I know of at least four other Tetris based Roll and Write games released this year alone, so it will be interesting to see if Copenhagen Roll and Write stands out in such a crowded field. July 15th. Margraves of Valeria is the fifth standalone game in the Valeria series by Daily Magic Games. You are a field marshal responsible for patrolling borders and building ward towers, and you can use local knights to help accomplish your designs. On your turn, you can play only one citizen card from your hand, which makes player turns very quick, but choosing which card to play is not as simple as it sounds, because there are four possible actions on each card. Deck building and worker placement are key elements of Margraves of Valeria, which will be the heaviest of the Valeria series thus far. I always enjoy art by the Miko. July 16th. Dice Throne Adventures is a set of cooperative expansions for use with the Dice Throne Season 1 or Season 2 characters. Players will work together over a series of game nights to travel from the Crimson Sands all the way to the Mad King's Throne Room, gaining permanent deck upgrades in each gaming session. Rumor has it that due to popular demand, the remastered Dice Throne Season 1 will be part of the Dice Throne Adventures Kickstarter campaign, including a battle chest similar to that previously offered for Season 2. 
Also launching July 16th is Etherfields, produced by Awaken Realms. Etherfields will be a cooperative adventure and exploration game with a dream crawling theme. With around 30 different scenarios, it will have deck building and escape room elements, along with the usual mountain of miniatures and some pretty funky masks. Tasty Minstrel Games recently announced that they will be doing one of their popular deluxified treatments on Emperor's Choice, a game designed by Hishashi Hayashi, the designer of Yokohama and Minerva. In Emperor's Choice, players are powerful subordinates of the Chinese Emperor, trying to increase their standing in the royal court. This will be the first time this medium weight euro is widely available in English. Did I leave out your favorite upcoming Kickstarter? If so, let me know in the comments below. Hey folks, and welcome to FOMO, the segment where I take a look at a game that's seeking crowdfunding right now. Maybe you have a fear of missing out on it. Maybe you do too. Today, we're going to take a look at a game that is in its final week. It's going to be ending this Sunday. It's going to be a game we're going to explore in an island, and we're going to be discovering some alien creatures. Today, I'm going to take a look at Darwin Knots from Green Couch Games. So here we're taking a look at Darwin Knots. This is a game where players are going to be recording alien species in an attempt to have the most points at the end of the game. The game is played with each player taking two actions. Now, I'm not going to explain everything in this game, but on a player's turn, they're going to do things such as place out explorers. They're going to be placing out tiles, connecting them, and even connecting regions. They're going to be discovering species, which allow them to reserve them. And they're going to be recording species, which is going to allow them to spend resources in order to add them to their collection. But in order to get resources, they need to first collect workers. And you can remove all of your workers once you've placed both of your tiles out that you have, and at which point you will remove any workers that you want from the board, collecting the associated resources printed on it, and draw two new tiles. Those resources are what you're going to spend to record the species. Now the game's going to go round and round like that until eventually we're going to find the rift, and the rift is where things get interesting, because while the island's been growing this entire time, now on a player's turn they're going to need to remove three outside tiles, so the island's going to slowly shrink until eventually there's going to be nothing left of it that is empty, meaning it doesn't have a worker. At which point the game is going to be over. Players are going to count up any victory points they have on their collection species. They're also going to do some set collection in terms of same colored species as well as species of a same color. They're going to get bonus points for that. They're going to get some bonus points for leftover resources and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. All right, so that is a brief overview of Darwin Knots. Now, I didn't cover every little thing, mostly in those bonus actions. So when you record a species, you do get to take a bonus action. And it's really cool because some of those allow you to rotate tiles, move tiles, and it really does add a little element of take that, but not enough to really mess up the game. This game feels familiar. It feels a little Carcassonne-y. It feels a little Splendor-y. Neither one of those words, but I'm going to use them anyway. But it really does have those familiar feelings in a game that really plays in the right amount of time. It's easy to teach, but really has a lot of nuance to it that I really found myself enjoying. And this game does not overstay its welcome. That was something I really enjoyed. Because the when I first read the rules, I was worried that maybe by the end it would be too much engine and I would just be constantly feeling like I wasn't are limited in what I could do, but really this game just suddenly ends in such a way that doesn't feel unsatisfying. And really the thing that I love the most about it is that twist halfway through the game where the island's been going out and now the island's coming back in. So overall, I really enjoyed this one. If you do as well, go ahead and check out their Kickstarter page. It is ending soon. It is fully funded. Green Couch has a proven track record with me and I hope other people as well. And go ahead and check them out, and I'll see you folks next episode. This is Jamie Stegmeyer from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about the release of your product. So you've run the Kickstarter, you've fulfilled your rewards to backers, or maybe you're at the tail end of that. And oftentimes what happens at this point is that projects kind of fizzle out at a key point in time when you could launch into retail success. You probably had a lot of buzz, or hopefully you had a lot of buzz during your Kickstarter campaign, but sometimes that buzz is almost focused too early and you don't have it when you actually release the product. So I wanted to talk about a few ways really quick 
um, to help generate some buzz actually when you are releasing the product. Like it's during that tail end when you're, when you're fulfilling rewards near the end of that and when you're getting close to what you hope will be a retail release of your game. Um, so a few things you can do. One, you can release advanced copies to reviewers. I would suggest going with the big reviewers for this. For later copies, you can send them to any reviewers who, who are willing to put in the time and effort to talk about your game to their audiences. But I'd go with the big reviewers for this one. Go with Rado, go, for, go with Dice Tower, go with um, uh, uh, Game Boy Geek. All the, all the big reviewers. Um, get them copies pretty much at the same time that your backers are getting them so that they can review them in time for the release date. Um, I highly suggest leveraging your backers for this release. It help get your backers excited that they finally have the game. Sure, they're probably excited that they actually received it, but uh, there's, a, uh, there's a psychology behind seeing that a lot of people are playing the game at the same time. So you want to encourage backers to actually get that game to the table and talk about it and ask questions about it. This will move you up on the hotness of Board Game Geek. Um, so post a project update that reminds backers that the game is now in their hands and that they can play it and that you're there to answer questions. You can even encourage kind of silly levels of engagement, like telling backers to post photos of themselves playing the game on social media, things like that. I highly suggest that you post photos once a week. So pick one really great photo of the game and post it once a week on Board Game Geek um, in the hopes of uh, having enough likes on that photo so that it'll get to the front page of Board Game Geek. You can do other things to get likes. You can't pay for likes or like bribe people for likes. You can't have contests around the likes, but you can put the photo out there on your other social media and say, hey, like this on Board Game Geek, and that'll push it to the front page. Um, I also, I always use a money back guarantee on my projects, or I did. Um, and so this is something that you have to already have set in place when you actually run the project. But my money back guarantees had a one month time frame, So it said, one within one month of you receiving your game your reward um, if you don't like it you can send it back to me for a money-back guarantee and this kind of adds a little bit of urgency when backers actually get the game to encourage them to get it to the table right away um, and again this will drive conversations on social media any any way that you can get people to get the game to the table will make a big difference when you're building that release level buzz um, Last, I, I've started using back-in-stock notifications. So you, maybe you had your project on Kickstarter, you had the rewards there, but you also had a pre-order up on your website, say, so that non-backers could still order the basic retail version of the game. Um, but at a certain point, you may have had to cut off the supply of that so you, that you could ensure that you had enough for your backers. I use back-in-stock notifications, so anyone who does that, who tries to order it but finds that it's not in stock, um, when I finally know, okay, I have games for these people, I can sell games to these people, I know their emails. I can contact them and say, hey, it's back in stock now. You can now order the game. Again, this is another way to engage people at the point of release. If you have any other ideas of how to do this, how to build buzz when you're actually releasing the game, feel free to let me know in the comments here or on my Kickstarter Lessons blog. Thanks. This episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. All right, well, recently um, Kickstarter updated one of their web pages and it caused some ruha online. I, I, that's how I found out about it. And so I thought we'd take, we'd take a look at these and see how this affects gaming. So they have a new page up here, kickstarter.com backslash honest. <laughs> so when you, there's a picture of Sam, honest. Okay, anyway, Pretty it says, good. so here we are, Just honest like and clear. <laughs> Presentations and projects, so blah, blah, blah. We need everyone to be honest, open, and candor. No problem. It says, here's some additional guidance for creators to help ensure that they're creating products that are honestly and clearly presented. Okay. So first we'll look at how you talk about your project. Okay. Um, and so they even say that you could be, this is kind of weird because they're not saying these are necessarily rules, but they're saying if you don't, they're just recommendations, but if you don't, be honest, they, they can shut your account down. Right. They say that. So carefully choose your wording and any claims you make. Now, I realize a lot of this has to do with non-gaming stuff. You of know, course. you can't bring out this and say, this will clean your whole house, well, and it doesn't. Okay. Yes, correct. Um, it says it should give them a realistic and accurate picture of what you've done so far, what stage of development you're in now, and what you're hoping to create with their support. Leaning on cheap marketing language to make your project appealing at the outset won't do you any favors. So... It says, present your project as an idea, not as a finished product, monolith. <laughs> I 
Well, I mean, this is one thing that is not done in board games. It's pretty much like, well, the game's almost done. All we need to do is print it. Beep. Yes, correct. Pretty much. Some, some people do develop more, and they sort of present like they're saying ideas, but um, some things are done. One of the projects we actually looked at today said the opposite said this is a finished product where we have certain amount of stretch goals but we're not going to have any more after that because we fear like we feel like anything that we add to it after that will mess up What's the there? years yeah. we've put into designing and balancing and all this other kind of stuff which makes sense so it really does yeah. um the only thing that's weird about all of this like this point specifically is or the one before it about, you know, claims and so forth. I wonder how much of this language is new. Is, this, is the entirety of this document brand new? Like, no, they I don't never know. had that before? Because it seems like it should, it should have, have been, been there. there yeah. Well, I mean, look at this. So there's a couple things here that I think are weird. Okay, it says go. don't, like the do not uh -huh. says, do not talk about your rewards as if they already exist if they don't yet. Okay, okay that's fine. Sure. So they don't exist. But then it says... Do not make assumptions about whether you'll be able to sell your product after Kickstarter, such as referring to its retail value. So you're not supposed to say things like 35% off MSRP. Now, that's something that definitely has been done. And that does affect a lot of board games. Right, because you'll say, hey, I'm going to sell this later on for a higher price. For more money, yeah. That's a... Well, That's I mean, a tough call to say because you, you want to say, hey, backers, if you back me, you're getting it cheaper than it will be later on. But you can't. You can't even. Yeah, you can't even say, I'm going to sell it for this much now and I'm going to sell it for this much later. Not, not according to this. Not according to that. You can't do that. That is. That's a corner to be yeah. pushed into as a board game publisher. I mean, um, I know Queen. Is it Queen who publishes some, some yeah, games it, through. Uh, it, it does say. Don't make assumptions. What if you already have a deal? Okay, that's true. What if I you get already that. have a deal with distributors that they're going to buy X number of games, they're going to sell them for this much money, and the Kickstarter is this much money? If you, you're not making an assumption at that point, right? I guess so. Here's another one that says, do not use superlatives or puffery to describe your project. Puffery! Such as the world's... I've never heard that word. The world's best, now smallest, fastest, first, or the ultimate, unrivaled, web revolutionary. So basically they're saying, don't Stop use... Stop lying. Well, no, <laughs> but they're also saying, don't use adver advertising. Term, that's uh, jargon. Yeah, but that's always done. Here's the world's best... The ultimate toothbrush. If it would be done on QVC, don't do it here. Okay, but I don't that's even know if I have a puffery. problem with this. Like Puffery? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, let's say a new. I like that word. Someone comes out with this new space epic game, and they're like, the most epic space game ever. I don't think it's wrong for them to say that. It might not be, but that's kind of like your I'll, opinion, I'll man. Like Puffery in <laughs> space. <laughs> All right. Be transparent about your project's funding goal and popularity. Do not set a funding goal that won't allow you to bring your project to completion. Um, yes. <laughs> hello. I mean, that's not a. I can't. This document must have existed in some form before right now. Well, Geislinger did say here that this part of the page is just more of a guidelines than actual rules. And the rules sure, but they there. said there. Well, but here I, I like what they say here. Set your funding goal to what you realistically need. This is like obvious stuff, but. Um, this one here, though, I'm so glad they had this. Do not add popularity badges such as fund it in five hours. So your project's images, videos, or description. And again, uh, they, when they start enforcing that, they, these are these are guidelines, not rules. Sure, but it says do not do this. I know, as an as a suggestion, not as a if you do this, you're going to get banned or you're right. going to get shut down. That's, that's no, what I get it, but Robert's it's still saying, saying it's the guideline, and I'm 100% on board with this one. Yeah. Because I tell you what, if I go to your thing and you're like, fund it in 47 minutes, I don't care. That doesn't affect me backing it. Right, I agree. Also, I think it looks cheesy. I know, that, that, uh, yeah. that's a personal opinion thing. I All agree right. with you 100%. Outline the risks and challenges you may face. Um, okay, so that's already there. Introduce the humans behind your project. 
If there are any. I don't. <laughs> Funded by Skynet. No, I actually like this. I like to see the people who made the game. That's a nice thing. I don't want to know where that beef jerky came from. Am I supposed to meet the cow? I mean, no. Said humans. That'd be um, great, actually. Wouldn't that be bovine. interesting if you're, like, kickstarting beef jerky? Here's and Pessy. Meet the team includes the cow. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our team members. I know that's very morbid and macabre. But I apologize. Some of our team members sacrificed a lot for this right. project. Here are the rules. Now, Sam said the rules were coming. These are, it says these are rules, not recommendation. Okay. Do it. Hit it. All right. Go. Use imagery that's honest and transparent. Now, this is where a lot of the controversy is coming into this page that's put up here. It yes. says, show your product in its current state using authentic photos and video. Does not happen with many board games. They show those 3D renderings all the time. And that's the big one. That's the one that I had heard about outside of this document. I had heard about that earlier. I don't know how I heard about it, but someone said that whole 3D rendered fake, you know, fake. It's not, re it's not done. Like, that doesn't exist. It's an image that's produced on a computer. Furthermore... Can do that. Furthermore, the the miniature that's produced from that image is not going to look like that image. At all, right. Well, it'll be close. No, nope. usually that used to be a dragon, <laughs> now it's several goats. We don't have time for controlling, hang on. So, <laughs> no, but usually they're pretty close. When I see yeah. a 3D image render of a game and I see the final game, I'm like, yeah, okay. Also, can't you just put a thing there that says 3D and rendering, I mean. They're saying you cannot. But. How are miniature companies supposed to show off the miniatures then? I don't know. That's a really good question. They have. They they have. You can't go and get that stuff. That's the whole point of the Kickstarter was to make those minis. No. Nah, well, you, you could make one. You could 3D print them. That would probably be the cheapest way to go about it. Yeah, but it says show your product in current state. That would be the current state. It's 3D printed. It's, it's an idea physical, for a miniature. It's a physical object. All right. Well, it says you can show CAD models, wireframes, and sketches, and technical drawings. So that's fine. Maybe the 3D renderings falls under that. I would imagine it does. But do that. not use photorealistic renderings. Do not heavily manipulate that's your images to show functionality. Again, I think it's not for games. You're like, look what this thing can do, and it can't for a device. But a 3D rendering is very specifically what they're saying there. You can do that. But look at this. Do not show your product packaging if it hasn't been produced yet. The packaging is the game box itself. Huh. I think I'm, I'm being... No. I think uh, time, to, <laughs> time to fix it. All right. I expect Kickstarter from here on out to not show me the box or the game or the rule book unless you printed it out. All right, so then it talks about you should show a prototype in its current state. Okay, that's fine. Do not demonstrate functionality that doesn't exist. Who cares? Do not use imagery video that's heavily suggestive of future functionality, and do not use CGI or special effects. So, again, I don't think that's anything Are to do with Are they saying that games. image is not okay? Yes, because it's got a red line over here, and then up at the top, that's okay. There's a guy okay. showing how to use a compass. This is some, by the way, this is a device that lets you draw perfect circles. Whoa. I know. Backing it. Also, you could stab someone with it. Ooh, <laughs> multi. One yeah, with that functionality, they can show that functionality. <laughs> Not test it. Plus, they cannot show you a uh, 3D rendering of someone being stabbed. This is Wait. also stop motion photography is also not okay. Apparently, there are so many videos that do that. They cannot do that. Woof. I, I'm I, telling I, you. All the videos are about to become really boring on Kickstarter if everyone really uses these guidelines. Well, I don't know. I just brought this up because I thought it was interesting. Oh, it it's something to do with Kickstarter. But and again, I think I'm almost 100% sure that this is pointed towards devices. Things that, oh, this will work, and then you get you're like, this doesn't work at all like they said. Board games is not a device. It's a way to play the game. I think this is pointed towards them covering their own butts. Oh, sure. And now they're like, cool, they're there. Do whatever you want. And if anybody gets in trouble, hey, there are these rules. You broke them. We're not responsible because someone backed something on our channel that was supposed to be a Rubik's Cube that solved itself, and it does not do that. That's what this looks like. This looks like one of those legality moves. I don't think they're enforcing any of this stuff. It's just there 
in case they get in hot water, they can throw that nice bucket of hot water right back on the person who made it. Well, there definitely have been some big projects of <coughs> electronic stuff that hasn't worked out well. The functionality is not correct. Yeah, but if this isn't in place, people could go after Kickstarter themselves. I don't know why they can't with some of their millions of dollars that they're making spend some time to make multiple pages for specific things. Hey, board game tabletop people, here are your guidelines. Especially since tabletop gaming is, as far as I understand, the biggest category on Kickstarter. Is it really? Uh, that's what I heard by people who make board games, who probably aren't exaggerating. Is uh, are hyperbolic statements allowed on Kickstarter? Never! <laughs> <laughs> you will rue the game. Uh, <laughs> if I know anything about it, it's the biggest website in the world. Uh, Kickstarter <coughs> guy slinger says uh, Kickstarter. Why is guy slinger talking so much today? I don't know. He's just he's mouthing off. Uh, <laughs> Kickstarter internal resources have said that this is really aimed at tech Kickstarters that have been a big problem, but doesn't mean they won't enforce towards other types if need be. I mean, honestly, this has also come up because technically, according to the terms of Kickstarter, you cannot start a Kickstarter if you haven't delivered on your other ones. Mm -hmm. And tell me how many board game publishers disobey that rule. Sure, of course. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, definitely don't It's follow. too long of a cycle, yeah. Right. I, mean, we were, I can't remember what company it was, but some company is like four or five games behind at this That's point. That's quite a few, actually. That's maybe too many. But uh, it is too many. But but uh, it is unrealistic to not allow companies to start one, a proven company, to start one while the other one hasn't quite completed delivering. It's just too long of a cycle. Originally, I read somewhere someone told me that you had to deliver something. And then you were okay, mm -hmm. so they would make a stretch. Go, they would make a, a thing like, "Hey, a thank you note from us." All right, we got something out. Really, that's yeah. interesting. That's one way around it, I guess. Huh. Alrighty. Well, that's that. Honesty in Kickstarter. All right. We'll see you guys again in two weeks for another crowd surfing. We'll be back tomorrow with a uh, live board game breakfast. That's right. Cool. I'm hungry already. Ooh. That didn't make sense, actually. Maybe I. So, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>